Well, it's not so much a passion of mine alone, it's also a passion of Lord Mayor Graham Quirk. Uh, because the tasks I do, uh, I do out of friendship with Graham. And the brief has been to build up tourism in Brisbane, we need regional links. And if we can do something uh, to foster regional tourism, that's really great a byproduct out of the work. So the two art buster pieces here that Jason have restored meticulously, minus their arms and legs, for very good reason, yep. right? Because we don't want, while we're giving a gift to the people of Kingaroy and the South Burnett, what we don't want is, you know, casts of exact replicas because that takes away the special nature of the investment that Brisbane has made. And so they're, they're here in Kingaroy. There are two have been gifted as well to the Black Butt community via the Roy Emerson Museum uh, and they'll be going up and display in their newly relocated hall as part of their hook to get bus tourism going to come and visit. However, the big plus from Brisbane's perspective is if we can get a DNB to DNB bike ride going once a year to celebrate Expo 88, D being dancers, which they are, one of them, and B being butterfly catchers. And they're both uh, the original Art Buster pieces, so they're not copies, they are the original 1988 pieces that were made for that period of Expo 88. Uh, and so the bike ride will connect up two brilliant new bits of tourism kit for the South Burnett. So you've got the Brisbane Valley Rail Trail, which is, you know, about to be completed. When I was driving up this morning, I saw the earthworks going on and the bridges being rebuilt. And then the emerging rail trail, which is going to go from Kingaroy, as I understand it, all the way down to, to Gympie. And it will be, if we can work out a connection, a logical and sensible connection between the two of them, the Queensland Bicycle Association, they're tagging it as the Great Queensland Rail Trail. And so Expo 88 can have a part in firing up that Great Queensland Rail Trail. So that's the vision. Brilliant. And what a great vision it is. But those statues were... And I was reading a piece in the paper over the weekend that just highlighted just how attached Expo goers got to those human statues. So when John Truscott was empowered to populate the uh, Expo site, the objective was, was to have the art as in places so that when you turned a corner, there was something stunningly staring you at in the face. It was the largest collection of sculpture in the Southern Hemisphere uh, up to that point in time and I don't think it's been beaten ever since to be honest and so it was very logical but people don't necessarily associate with art that is very out there and alternate and so to sweeten up the contact that's where the Human Factor series came in and so they encourage people to notice and to partake of the art which then obviously meant that the other art was more appreciated and better attached. And that's exactly what we're doing in the Expo 88 Art Trail. We're using those art buster pieces the same way. We've just, you know, the Brisbane City Council has just spent $500,000 on rebirthing the Expo 88 Art Trail. 400 odd thousand approximately went on restoring one piece called Showdown uh, up at Spring Hill. Brilliant piece, but where everyone's engaging is in the $100,000 in the four art buster pieces, which are in this region. I mean, you've got the originals. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. you know, how lucky are you guys? Indeed, absolutely. Expo surprise. <laughs> I like that. Just tell me your own memories of Expo at the time. What, what are your chief memories of, of 88? You know, they are so inconsequential, so understated as to be almost non-existent because I um, mean I was a very busy business executive at the time I had a, a season pass and my experience was t on a Friday night to go in and have a few quiet drinks and a restaurant meal on wherever I could find it if there was a queue I never went into the New Zealand Pavilion because every time I went there it had, had a queue I, I, you know, same here Yeah, <laughs> I, I went into the Vatican Pavilion because there was no queues on it the Magna Carta, no queues there went bizarre as well Two stories. Neil Ford, who used to own Yellow Cabs, his mother, went to Expo every single day. Did not miss one day. Uh, and Neil t tells the stories of his mother getting cranky if the cab was late. <laughs> you know? 
that's dedication for you. Exactly. And then the second amazing little tidbit of information is that there were a group of people who used to stand in the line, get up to the front entrance, leave it, go back at the end of the line, just so that they could talk to people going through the line. I mean, <laughs> for, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> That probably solves the mystery because there was always, among my group of friends, we were told a story of, of watching someone get up close to the top of the New Zealand Pavilion line and then bail out at that crucial moment. Maybe that's what their end game was, but it's, uh, it beggars belief really, doesn't it? There had to be a reason for it.